Ambernick is back at it again with the RG35XX SP, and today I'm gonna give a quick look and some thoughts on the device. Clamshells, magnets, Game Boy Advance, we got a retro stew going, let's hop in. Where are my manners? That's right, I'm supposed to unbox the thing first. And go. Oh, what's inside? Oh my goodness, is it the RG35XX SP from Ann Burnick? Yes, it is. A glorious clamshell. It looks nearly identical to a Game Boy Advance SP. Funky SP. Isn't it cute? Look at this, it comes with a screen protector. Doop, 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 doop. Do, 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 do. It was requested to me to overlay some B-roll of me playing this in bed, so uh, I'm gonna make sure that happens while we're here. Let's take a look at this thing. Never press too hard on these screen protectors, by the way. Sold separately, but you also have cool little clam case. Put your clam shell in. So just right off the bat, I mean, this thing is a chonk. If we look at it in comparison to a regular Game Boy Advance SP, it's a little bit taller, definitely thicker. But look at how close the design is. Incredible. Now, they sent the silver one for review here, and if you get a transparent model, you're gonna have the option to swap in a fun, thin piece of paper or a sticker inside the shell, and so that's gonna shine through, and that's pretty cool. The hinge here has magnets inside, and that really helps right there, and all the way back, just like that. Look at that, perfection. Goes back even farther than the original SP. Now this comes with the tried and true H700 CPU. So you've seen that on devices like the 35XX Plus, 35XXH, and 28XX, they're mini. Isn't it cute? Still working on a video for this one. Although if I do it this style, maybe I can get it done faster. I gotta catch up to Zoo. He is dominating this channel with content. So, but if you wanted to know other specs, they are on the screen right here. This has Linux on it, same 3300 milliamp hour battery, and very close to the other devices, so much so that if you wanted to, you could throw in the custom firmware from something like the 35XXH or the Plus, and uh, it's just gonna boot up and work, but the lid closing feature is not gonna work yet, so they're gonna have to implement that feature, but that is good to know. I really like the shell, it's a nice matte plastic, it's not leaving fingerprints. It reminds me of my old silver GBA SP, very much so. I almost kind of want to scratch it to see if we can give it a little nostalgic scratch. So you got a battery compartment here. If you were to take this out, the battery's right underneath there and it's right over the CPU. So in my testing, uh, this has been a little bit warm. I've had the device for a little over a day now and uh, I played with it in bed. I played with it on the couch. I played with it outside and Overall, it's really growing on me. At first, I found the buttons to be pretty fatiguing, but I've been practicing and getting good, and they've been growing on me. Shoulder buttons are a breeze, though. These are just really nice. Let's take a listen. The loudest buttons are start and select, and the menu button. Face buttons are more of a quiet clicky, and D-pad as well. Here's the thing, is that yes, they're a little stiff, and it takes a little bit of pressure to push them more so than the original SP. It's slight, but I actually prefer, after using the original, I actually prefer the D-pad on the Anbernic compared to the original. And face buttons, while they're a little easier to press on the OG model, this is very, very, it feels just accurate. Like you're going to get accurate presses. When I was playing games like Captain Skyhawk and NES, D-pad is just dead on accurate. Hydukens were easy to pull off. But for platformers and games like Mega Man X and other games like that, where you need to rapidly press face buttons, that can be a little fatiguing. So you're gonna have to train your thumbs and fingers a bit. But as I've been using it, uh, I haven't really found it to be a deal breaker or anything. I'm just not used to it as much coming from a lot of rubber membrane devices. And Ambernick really has not made any clicky buttons before. I'm so used to their usual rubber membrane mushy buttons. 
that it was kind of a shock at first. But let's remember, of course, clicky dome switches, like you have on here, harkens back to the idea they were going for. So pretty cool. Uh, two SD card slots on the bottom, 3.5 headphone out, USB-C up top, USB-C to C charging, by the way. So that's good to know. HDMI out. Screen has a 3.5 inch 640 by 480 display, one gigabyte of RAM. You do have Wi-Fi Bluetooth on here. And yes, closing the lid does put it to sleep. Or you can set it to shut down. Now, in our full review, we need to do some battery tests to see how efficient that sleep mode is because on devices like the 28XX, it turned off the screen and turned off the speaker and the stock software, and so it would drain the battery pretty quick. So I'll keep testing with that. The hinge works really well. I'll take a listen. Quiet. Now, I don't know if that's quite as satisfying as the snap from the Tau Kitty V90. Listen to that. Yeah, I'd say this hinge still wins for me for that classic satisfying click snap. Compared to the original, it's similar, quiet. But of course this is bigger than the V90 and thicker. This one costs you about 30 bucks and still a great clamshell to this day. This one does have mushy buttons and it does it well. I like this one, solid. Game Boy Advance models, definitely the SP is my favorite. There are other colorways, so there's a transparent blue, transparent black, and then a DMG gray model, which they call white. In the promo material, you saw that there was a logo up here, so that's not there anymore. No light up logo, which you know what? I'm okay with, but I do love those magnets. Boy, do I love magnets. Mm. Ergonomics wise, let's take a look from the back here. Let's see, kind of grip it like that. Easy to reach those shoulder buttons. Easy to throw in the pocket. Should we do a pocket test? I have a new sit stand desk that uh, Flexi Spot sent over. Not too bulgy. Bulges out a little bit. Not too bad. And really, I mean, you can do kind of uh, whatever you want with it, so. That's the nice thing about clamshells. You don't necessarily need a case. You throw it in your pocket, your purse, your backpack, your Tom Talk case, and away you go. All right, what's next? Sorry, I got some moisture under the screen protector there. One thing I noticed is that on the battery compartment, there's a little bit of give right there on the left side, but not as much on the right. So it's just a nitpicky thing, but you kind of, when you're when you're playing, you push in on the battery compartment a bit right there. But yeah, pivots really nice on that D-pad. Face buttons work well. You have a mono front firing speaker, which I like right in the dead center and volume up and down. Reset on the side, power button. Let's turn it on. Even has the classic GBASP green light right there. So stock software, we've seen this before. Not a lot to go over here. In the app center, it should be noted, there's an ebook reader, video player, music player, and so there's some apps here. So the apps have some special features for this device, such as bezels. So if you set this to auto, when you're playing Game Boy Advance, you're gonna be seeing a Game Boy Advance SP logo on the bottom. It's going to make it perfect, uh, perfectly sized. So I'm leaving this on. I don't love having bezels on all systems, but I found it just made things easier just to leave this to auto. You can turn it off per system if you want and set it to manual. Uh, there's a night mode power LED. Uh, you can set quick shutdown or sleep when you close the lid. So if you go in there, you can say, hey, actually when you close the lid, I want this to shut down, um, but I've set it to sleep. And shaders, a lot of the systems have a some sort of stylish shader. For Game Boy Advance SP, there's like a grid, CRT type grid on there. And so you can turn that on if you want, but I don't love shaders, just turn those off. Going over to settings, you can set your lock screen. I'm gonna set it to never here. Backlight brightness, you have level one, two, three, four, and five. And it gets fairly bright if we compare it to, let's take a look at the plus here. Oh yeah. And that's right, on any of these H700 devices, when you first boot them up, you're gonna get this horrible button sound. Go ahead and turn that off. So what do you think? Same brightness? When I was playing outside, I had no issue with this. It looked the same to me. It looks the same here. Viewing angles, 
look nice. This might be the same screen. Pretty decent IPS screen you get in here. I do love MIU screens a little bit better because you can fine tune the contrast in different aspects, but custom firmware could easily allow us to, to do that on here too. So let's go to dimmest. So yeah, if you own a 35XX Plus or the H, you kind of are gonna know what to expect here. We don't need to spend a ton of time on the various features and ways to use uh, the H700 CPU. We have quite a few other videos on our channel uh, on this chipset. We've talked about this chipset quite a lot, but that's really great because so many custom firmwares are available from day one, such as Moo OS, such as Newly and Garlic OS and MenUI. There are so many custom firmwares for this. We're gonna have more content showing which might be the best for you, but the best for me, actually, I like the stock OS on this pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it right now. I, I've dabbled in all the different custom firmwares. Uh, definitely for the original 35XX, Garlic OS was where it's at, but for me, they've done a pretty decent job on stock to where I've been using that more than anything on these. But uh, we will get into custom firmware to show you because they're pretty cool and uh, they're coming along nicely and a bunch of cool extra features that you can't do on here. Do an IO test. Yeah, we're hitting all the directions. It even has rumble. Check this out. Cool beans. That's right. I still say cool beans. I'm an adult. Do what I want. And you get your network settings. If you want to connect to Wi-Fi, you can change the icons. You can change the theme, the button sound. Dear God, no. And you can have the light go off when it's asleep. So let's do that. Okay, let's hop back into games and play some stuff. We looked at the screen. Oh, the speakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad. Not bad for a little mono speaker. I'm all right with that. Get out of here. Now, I started with a near full charge in the battery and I have yet to charge this thing. So we still have, we'll say 65, 70%. I played it about an hour and a half, two hours, maybe two, maybe two and a half hours now. Uh, a lot of that was NES and lighter stuff. So, you know, it's gonna vary for you. Battery life so far has been on par with the other devices. And on higher end systems, it does get kind of warm here, quite warm in fact. So that's one thing. While in the winter, it's a nice to have for a hand warmer. Uh, in the summer months and spring, I don't like it. Hand starts to get a little sweaty. So just realize that. Uh, again, I wanna talk about these, the face buttons and the D-pad. So I did find it uh, kind of crampy with my hands the first few hours with the device and fatiguing. But again, as I've been taking breaks and trying it again, <laughs> just kind of getting myself in the mindset of these dome switch buttons on here, not too bad, but yeah, a little bit warm here. Again, this is the battery on the CPU doesn't help. So if we can get some sort of mod to isolate the battery, that would be great. Toss an RH sticker on the shell right there. Look at that. I'll have to get a square one made. That's not gonna, that doesn't look too bad. I kind of like that. Maybe we'll do that one. Let me pull my plant in here. You guys, we all need to make, me included, we need to make square options. Retrobree, so that's too wide. You could wrap it around. My plants uh, has, has died now. I didn't water it quite enough. I'm sorry about that. What else? Hmm. What else do these YouTubers talk about in a first look video? Some different systems on here. You have PSP, OpenBoard, Dreamcast, PlayStation, Neo Geo, all the CPS, one, two, three, for Pico 8, hell yeah, brother. Uh, Game & Watch, GBA, Famicom, or NES, SNES, SMS, GBC, GB, NDS. Like to see NDS, missed that one on the 28XX, although they just added it, so that's cool. N64, again, a little strange uh, having that on here. We don't have a stick, but you know what? Number of games work okay, work fine. We'll get into it. Thomas Wave, I've recently fallen in love with the Thomas Wave. And okay, so I'm not that good at Dolphin Blue yet, but you get Naomi, and you have ports, cave story, all that good stuff. And yes, 
even Super Noah's Ark 3D. Have some berries, go to sleep. Super Nintendo, on this four by three aspect ratio device, by the way, retro achievements work no problem. So you get uh, some auto bezels here, Famicom style. Oh good, I saved my state. And yeah, Nintendo DS is on here. You can switch between screens, or if you want two tiny screens, you can do that. Although I prefer to swap on something like this. But yeah, I was really surprised to see the pricing after expecting well over, you know, $80, $90 for the magnets, for the clamshell factor, cost more to make. Uh, seeing it come in priced directly in line with their other H700 devices was just awesome to see. Just awesome. PSP works on here, certainly, but because it's meant for a 16x9 screen, you're going to be losing some space above and below. Anyone see the sleep function? Boop. It's asleep. And look, lights off. Boot it up. Immediately pops you back in the game. Pico A is a wonderful, wonderful system. I highly recommend it. Cannot seem to get past this part. Look at that. Look at that bezel they have there. That is legit. Look at that. It's a little N64 for you. Look at that. Look at that bezel. Look at that DMG green. Oh, that's good. Well, anyways, <laughs> let's wrap up. So if you're into the 35XX SP and you're wondering, hmm, where do I order? Links are in our description. Uh, it starts at $58 right now, and you will need to add on shipping to that. It is a fantastic starting point. It is an easy recommend from me so far. Uh, I'm gonna keep playing with it, testing, and we're gonna have more content out on our channel. If you're interested, again, anburnick.com, AliExpress, and eBay are a few spots you can get it. I'll add the link for Amazon as soon as that listing goes live, but that is on the way as well. Yeah, Anburnick has done something crazy here and turned an SP, like, right, this is on the nose. This is an SP on the nose. A little chonkier, a little bigger, uh, but I think you're gonna see this one be wildly popular for a long time. You're gonna see new people get into our hobby, into our niche. People are gonna be drawn to this. I wanna get blue myself. I would love to get blue. Uh, and the DMG looks so good. If you're looking for some alternatives and you wanna save money for half the price, you can get the Pow Kitty V90, which is, you know what? Screen's not as good, but it is so easy to take with you on the go. Other clamshells, a little more money, and if you can find one used, get yourself a Retroid Pocket Flip here. This thing's really cool. Touch screen, fancy, widescreen, great for PSP, all that good stuff, as well as the GPD XD and XD Plus, another awesome clamshell option, and widescreen. So a little older, but still one of my favorites. Again, not bad. Gets a little warm, don't love that. Takes a little pressure to hit those buttons, but with some practice, uh, you can get as good as I am with them, which I'm sure you're already better than me at this. So we're gonna practice this and uh, and get good there. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, oh, when do you get it? Right, when do you get it? Again, it goes live on the 17th at three in the morning. Just get up the next morning and get it. It's not gonna be sold out. It, they usually never are. It's been very rare. Thank you so much for watching once again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay in the know for all of your favorite retro handhelds. And I want to say a special thanks to our patrons, members, and subs. You really do make this possible for us. Thank you so much. Perks with RH start for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to check out our other videos. Join us in our Discord to chat and play games, and join us on the next one. As always, this has been Stubbs. Take care of those handhelds, everybody, and each other. Off I go!